If you are starting university in September, October 2020, I bet you have lots of questions. Should you defer? Will it be easier or harder to get into university? What will Freshers Week be like? And will you lectures be online? Hey guys, A Level Results Day is on Thursday and the stress that has been building up um, over the past few weeks, past few months of that is about to become very, very real and Results Day is going to be very busy, it's going to be very pressured, there's lots of things you need to do on Results Day, but you also have to make the decision of if you get a place at university, are you going to go? So I know a lot of you have been looking at the news, looking at social media and seeing the the bits from Scotland where everyone's grades have gone down quite a lot. So the first thing you're like, hey, is it going to be easier or harder to get into university this year? Now grades this year are calculated grades. You did not get to sit your exams this year, which means there is no way to get your papers remarked. There's no way to change your grade. In the past, if you weren't happy with what you got on results day, you could apply for a priority remark of your paper. And that was generally done pretty quickly. In time for the universities to make a decision about whether you could accept your place or you could not accept your place. This year that is not happening. There is going to be an appeals process but it's more of an administrative appeal, not um, a remark of anything. Living a sin situation where if you need higher grades to get into university, you're going to have to wait until the autumn, sit the autumn exam series, wait until December for those grades to come through and by that point it is going to be too late for you to get that university place. Universities are not going to hold places for you for that long. I know it is very unfair, I know lots and lots of you are upset and angry about that and I'm really sorry. If I could change things for you, I, I really, really would. But there is some good news, or rather good news for home students, not necessarily good news for universities and the economy in general. Because a lot of international students are not going to be coming to university in the UK this year. Roughly 20% of the student population in the UK is international students and 90,000 of those international students come from China. In fact, Hong Kong alone sends more students to study in the UK than the whole of America does, which is quite a lot of people. But those students aren't going to be coming to the UK this year, which means there's going to be space in the universities. Now, I say this is bad for universities and bad for the economy because international students contribute a lot to the economy. Universities charge them very, very large fees, which subsidises a lot of the things that you guys do. But without those international students, without those international fees being paid, universities are going to have spaces that they want filled up. Empty spaces on courses are not good for universities. So I imagine what you're going to see is that it's going to be easier to get into university this year. That a lot of you maybe don't get the exact grades that you need, but your university course will still accept you. I know that is exactly what happened to me. I went to University of Bath. I think I needed two A's and a B. I think that was my offer. And I got two B's and a C. And somehow they still accepted me. No questions asked. So I can see that happening a lot this year. So good news, it is going to be slightly easier, in my opinion, for you to get into university. Now the other thing this means with the lack of international students that a lot of top universities that maybe you didn't even apply to, maybe you thought were well out of your reach, are going to have spaces. They're going to have spaces that they desperately want filled up. So you might even get the chance to go to a better university than you thought because of the space. When you start at university the first week, the first fortnight is Freshers Week and it is a lot of fun. Um, a lot of socialising going on, a lot of meeting other people, a lot of um, getting to know people. Um, but what is Freshers Week this year going to actually be like. Now it is impossible to predict what the situation will be like in September and October. I know that's only a month, two months away but things are changing really really quickly. Things are changing 
overnight and the government is giving us very little notice so we do not know what is going to be happening in September or October but already universities have started putting out information um, about what is going to be happening so lots of them are doing virtual freshers weeks which sounds really rubbish in my opinion because um, freshers week is about getting to know people and exploring things and getting to see lots and lots of things. A few universities have mentioned that you'll be in bubbles of the people that you live with. Um, my first year at university, I was in a house of 13 people. I still talk to some of those people, very good friends, but if I only met and socialised with 13 people for my first year of university, it wouldn't quite have been the same experience that I actually had. My husband was in halls or 40 people, so that's quite a much larger bubble, but still, only socialising with the people that you live with, well, again, isn't quite the same experience or freshers week, and it's all completely understandable because freshers flu is a real thing. With everyone um, mixing together, with everyone socialising and getting to know each other, germs spread very, very quickly. Around the second, third week of university, all the freshers start to get colds and flus and glandular fever. Um, and these spread like wildfire through universities. Something like coronavirus could easily, very, very quickly spread when you've got mixing of lots of different communities from all over the country, all over the world, in one very tight place with lots of getting to know each other going on. Universities are also talking about online lectures. Now Cambridge has already said that it's moving its whole year completely online. Manchester said that at least the first term is going to be online already. Um, so Freshers Week might not be a problem because you might still be at home doing exactly the same thing that you've been doing for months just with a few lectures to attend. Now depending on which course you do you might have something like 15 hours of lectures a week or five hours of lectures a week and then expecting to do writing and reading and practice questions on top of that. But online lectures is not necessarily going to be the same experience that I had and maybe your siblings have had, your friends have had when they went to university. I used to have 7am lectures which were brutal if you'd been out the night before but I also had 6 o'clock lectures on a Friday night which was fine because that was our only lecture on a Friday and the pub was above the lecture theatre so I'm 100% sure we were not allowed to do this but we used to take our pints, which we'd been drinking from lunchtime, and then go and sit in the back of the lecture theatre and make really, really rubbish notes. And this is all part of the university experience. Um, and you're not going to get that with online lectures. So after all of that, I imagine a lot of you are wondering if the right thing would be to defer. And I can't answer that for you. There is no right or wrong thing. It is a personal opinion. Um, a lot of you have been sitting around the house doing nothing since March. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have been very, very busy as well. But if you defer, well, there's not going to be anything to do because nothing's open. At least if you start your university, university course, you will actually have something to do. Deferring and sitting around the house for another year, not doing very much, well... I mean, I'm desperate to start doing things again. Um, but it also isn't going to look great on your CV in the future if you just sit around the house doing nothing. We also don't know if the situation's going to be any better in 2021. Oh, the thought of that is really depressing. But not doing something now because you think something might be better in the future, when there's no guarantee of anything being better in the future, you're just waiting for things to get back to normal and we don't know whether anything's actually going to be getting back to normal anytime soon or not. So waiting for things that might never happen to happen, well, it's not something I would do. In my opinion, it is going to be easier for people to get into university this year. And then all of those international students, everyone that deferred because they wanted the proper university experience, is going to be aiming to start in September 2021. So it might be a lot harder to get into university next year. But this is me just guessing because we don't really know what is going to happen in September 2021. 
However, the university experience is not going to be the same this year. You're not going to make lifelong friends in the first day you're at university, which I know is a bit of a cliche, but loads and loads of people really, really do. You're not going to have the freshers week, you're not going to have the lectures, you're not going to have the labs and the tutorials. Well, some places may be doing that, some places aren't doing any of those at all. It is not going to be the same. So if one of the reasons you're going to university is to get that university experience, then that is not going to happen this year. It might just mean that when you go to university, your second year is gonna be epic and awesome and amazing, but there's no guarantee that your second year is not gonna be online as well. So, I know that you wanted me to give you the answer and I haven't given you the answer. I've just given you a lot of slightly depressing waffle, but um, you need to do what is best for you. Um, do you have a lot of things that you need to do at home, so you need to stay at home and actually for, for a year would be the best thing for you, or are you absolutely itching and desperate to get on with the next stage of your life, having sat at home watching daytime television or playing computer games for the last six months? Um, whatever you do guys, good luck. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.